Carl, today's video is yet again sponsored. It is indeed, yes, by a guy called John who wanted me to talk about sheep and wool and wool spinning. No, I'm not making this up. That's awesome. I'm so happy this is my job. <laughs> the North Ronald's A is a rare breed of sheep endemic to the Orkney Islands in Scotland. In addition to being one of the rarest kinds of sheep on Earth, the North Ronald's A is noted for the quality of both its meat and its wool, the former of which is linked to the sheep's near all seaweed diet. Okay, Carl, so tell me a bit more about this North Ronald's A sheep then. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not sure how you pronounce Ronald's A. Uh, so I'm just going to call it the North Ronald because it says Ronald. <laughs> so the North Ronald sheep is, as I said, one of the, the oldest and rarest kinds of sheep on Earth. And um, it is believed to date all the way back to the Iron Age and the, the, its closest living relatives are like ones in Scandinavia or some shit like that. So the theory is, oh yeah, like Vikings and stuff might have brought it over and then it got trapped on this little island in the Orkneys and now it just lives there. And owing to the fact it lives on this very, very tiny island in a very remote part of the world, um, the sheep is exceptionally tiny. So it's this tiny little adorable shaggy sheep oh my that God. just roams the beaches. And that's all it does. And it looks awesome. And that's all well and good. But the most interesting thing about the sheep is that, as mentioned, it survives almost entirely on a diet of seaweed. So, Carl, like, I might be wrong here, but... Just eating seaweed doesn't sound exactly like the healthiest of diets. Well, you're right there, Lucas. There are only two creatures on Earth known to be able to survive on a diet like this, and that is the North Ronald's A and a rare species of swimming iguana. <laughs> okay. It's like, so the only two creatures on Earth that can survive entirely on seaweed are a sheep and an iguana that swims. <laughs> and the thing about that iguana is it's the only iguana on Earth known to swim and just, like, get its food from under the water. <laughs> They are the world's only sea lizards. It's like when you see those clips of sea snakes and go, well, fuck me. Nowhere safe. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. And I realized that more and more have been appearing. Were they here before and I didn't see them? Or did they come out from someplace? I'm not scared of snakes, but if there was one in the room, I'd be a bit uncomfortable if I didn't know that someone owned that snake. And you always think with a snake, he's got no fucking legs. He's, he's all neck. Realistically, a snake is the easiest animal to defend yourself from because it's all neck and therefore very easy to strangle. But right, the fact that there exists not only sea snakes, but flying snakes pisses me off. It's like, make up your damn mind evolution. Can this animal, like, you know, move very quickly or not? Because the idea that a creature with no legs can swim freaks me the fuck out. I mean, the fact that one can fly freaks me out more, Carl. Yeah, the ones that live in trees and will jump and glide from tree to tree. Oh, they've conquered every, like, part of the world, Carl. They have, yeah, and it's an animal with no fucking legs, but we'll bring it back to the North Ronald's Day, because this thing is amazing, because as mentioned, it is one of only two creatures on Earth known to be able to subsist almost entirely on seaweed, and the reason that surviving on a diet of seaweed is not something any other animal can do. It's because seaweed is very salty and not all that nutritious. But the North Ronald's A is like, fuck that, and its stomach has evolved specifically to process seaweed. And it's so specialised that if it ate grass, it would die. Holy shit. And think about that for a moment, Lucas. I, a sheep that dies if it eats grass. And that is the original pitch I got for this article that I wrote um, because John who sponsored today's video had one stipulation besides tell people about my wool and it was talk about this sheep and I went we don't often do suggestions on the channel like Luke as you can confirm I, I rarely if ever pay heed to any suggestions yeah normally people get told to like stop making suggestions all the time because the idea behind the channel is that it's framed as a conversation between friends so for the most part, I want to talk about stuff that interests me, so my enthusiasm comes across to you, the audience. But when I started researching the North Ronalds, I went, okay, let, let's see if there's anything I, interesting about this sheep, because yeah, it, eating seaweed is cool, but I don't get why that's a big deal. And then I found out, oh, it's a trait shared by one other creature, and it's a fucking iguana. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then, and this is the thing, I'm like, why didn't John tell me this? And it's that, Oh yeah, in addition to having exceptionally high quality wool, which is why I'm presuming he thought, oh, it'd be a good, 
like, you know, leading to my thing that I want to sponsor, uh, its meat is also apparently of exceptionally high quality because the sheer amount of salt in the diet of the sheep pre-seasons the meat. <laughs> And it's like, these things are so adorable, but apparently they're so delicious. And like, there are quotes from people who've like tasted the meat of, reminder, this endangered super rare sheep. And they've said like, yeah, um, it's so tasty and so delicious that um, you don't even have to season any broths or like you know, meals that contain the meat because the meat itself is so gamey and spicy, it naturally flavors the dish. And the worst thing is, Carl, like, we're now bringing attention to this, to lots of people, and I want to go and taste that sheep. Well, here's the thing, because it's so rare, there's been a push for people to recognise the sheep itself, and uh, there is a small number of them that live on the Orkney Islands that are farmed, specifically, and they only sell a small amount of the meat and of the wool. So it's one of those things where it's like, it's sustainable enough where the, like, the money we make from selling the meat is enough to like, you know, help raise awareness of the sheep itself. But yeah. I just feel so fucking bad for this creature because it basically spends its entire life pre-seasoning itself. No wonder it's fucking endangered. It's like that great Family Guy joke of fast animal, slow children. And you've just got the kid who's continually spilling like barbecue sauce on himself. <laughs> He's like, he wants to be eaten. Come on, guys, wait up! Oh, dang, I got honey all over my legs! But we can move away from that and just talk about the diet for a moment, because seaweed uh, is just on the ground, it's there, but only for specific times of the day, because the tide comes in. Yes. Uh, so the sheep's entire life revolves around walking along the beachfront um, around low tide so we can eat this seaweed. But some sheep don't like the idea they have to wait for their dinner. So they've been seen swimming out into the ocean <laughs> to get more seaweed. <laughs> it's not like, a unique thing because a lot of sheep can swim so they don't generally like doing it because they're covered in wool which is very absorbent. I feel so bad <laughs> for this animal. Because <laughs> what do you think happens when a sheep swims into the fucking water? <laughs> It reminds me of when like, a mate of mine like, uh, blocked up every fucking toilet in school because his girlfriend went into the girls' toilets and got him some, like, economy super-sized tampons. Oh, no. <laughs> and he dropped one into each toilet and those went... <laughs> and look at that, As a kid, when you look at that and you go, what are girls doing with these? Oh, my God. I just imagine like the sheep just inflating to like ginormous size, just remaining buoyant, just through like the sheer wooliness of it. And Lucas, what are your thoughts just in general on sheep? I mean, I just, I like them. They're just big, dumb, fluffy animals, but I feel kind of bad when like I see a freshly sheared sheep and it looks all cold. <laughs> yeah, they don't look great, do they? It's like, uh, do you ever hear that story about Shrek? Shrek the sheep? I don't think so. Well, this story is fucking amazing, and there was some people living in a village somewhere who noticed this sheep that was um, quite dishevelled because it had not been shaved in like two years. And it was so covered in fluff, it was just all wool. So it was just this ball of wool, but they couldn't find it. So they only had like sightings of the sheep, which they affectionately named Shrek. And they had to chase it down to find it so they could shear it because they were scared that if they didn't, it would die. Is this like so the British a... equivalent of Bigfoot? Just a massive <laughs> sheep? <laughs> this huge sheep. Like, there was like weeks like, have you seen Shrek the sheep? We need to rescue him. He's so fluffy, he might die. And it's like, oh God. And there was a story. Uh, a friend of mine from Norway, and they told me like, oh yeah, um, someone near where I live owns a reindeer farm. But he owns so many reindeer that um, when he got complaints from our town about the reindeer getting into the town, rather than build a fence around his property, he built a fence around our town. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was cheaper to build a fence around the town and stop the reindeer getting in than it was to try and put one around his land. <laughs> okay, Carl. Oh, no, Luke. oh God. Oh, okay. Lucas, I went to take a sip of coffee and I wear a white t-shirt. Oh, no. Oh god, oh god, no! Oh, I just bought this, it costs two pounds! No! <laughs> well, I guess I know what that sponsor money is. Yeah, I bought a t-shirt for two quid. Decathlon, fuck it off, for fuck's sake. 
I thought I was looking all classy today. <laughs> thought I put a tick. So I wore like my blazer and everything. Oh, it's a sponsor. I look nice. There's some fucking coffee all over my scent. Oh, no. Fuck's sake. It's not professional, is it? I mean, painted. Oh, God. That, oh, this is never coming out. What are we talking about again? Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, we were going to bring it right back round to the uh, the good old Ronald Cheap car. The Ronald Sheep. The North Ronalds. Are, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they eat like 20 pounds of seaweed a day and the salt content would kill any other animal. But as I mentioned, the sheep have specifically evolved to handle that much sodium in their diet. And a side effect of it is that it seeps into their very muscles, affecting the taste of their meat. And as a result, um, the meat has a rich gaminess and natural spiciness to it, which has resulted in the sheep being uh, of interest to high-end restaurants who are very interested in purchasing its meat. Uh, it's like, I'd feel bad for it, but like when it spends its entire life seasoning itself, I don't think it has a choice whether or not it's going to get eaten. I mean, my mouth is like literally salivating at the thought of, oh my God, this sheep, man, it must taste so nice. It must taste so nice, but it's so adorable and, it great, and it has really, really fine wool, which brings us to our sponsor. So Lucas, I'm suddenly looking like a fucking mess, but would you like to talk to people today about our sponsor? Because we've discussed it in private. And we found it so funny. Like you wanted to hop on this call for this video specifically because it's just so dumb how this like deal came about. Yeah. Um, so the guy that is sponsoring this video, I believe his name is John. Yes. John. Yes. And um, all that Carl really told me yesterday was just like, oh, so this sponsor basically I like, had money to uh, get sponsored in some way, and yes. turned around to his wife and was like, yeah. I'm going to get sponsored on this fat peeing video. And she told him, that's a stupid idea, don't do that. And I'm like, fucking in, in straight away. And in the ensuing conversation I had with John, he explained to me that he and his wife run a store where you can buy various fibres for spinning. And I had no idea what spinning was, but I googled a few videos and it was very relaxing. The spindle is providing the tension and as it stops spinning, you have to release your right hand and twist it again. And John told me that he doesn't give a fuck what I talk about at the end of the video, as long as the actual main body of it is about the North Ronald Day. And the deal we struck is if enough people watching this video, go through to the link below, Wool Chamber, which is the site he runs, and order some wool, um, he will reach out and sponsor another video, um, which we have complete free reign over the topic of. And I really, really want this deal to work out because I am in love with the idea we might have a recurring sponsor that sells wool. There's always other YouTube channels out there and they've got like, oh yeah, today's video is also sponsored by Audible again. And they go into their fucking shitty 60 second ad read or it's Ray Shadow Legends. It's like, and you can see they don't give a shit. Yeah. And for us, it could be today's video is sponsored by Wool Chambers. Let's talk about some fucking wool. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome, and people might be thinking, like, what am I going to use wool for? But right now, people, like, you know, during the dark times that we were recording we're in... You're inside. You want a hobby? Spin some wool. Get into some DIY. Yeah, you could sp learn to spin yourself some wool. And I checked his store. He has so much fucking wool. He's, like, he's got, like, alpaca wool. And do you know when you see an alpaca and you go, I want to pet that alpaca? Oh, yeah. You look at it and you go, I bet that's really soft. Now you can find out you can buy some alpaca wool and feel it for yourself. And you can like, like knit you yourself a little winter hat made out of alpaca fucking wool. You could have an alpaca hat. You could do that. That's a thing you could own, folks at home. And I think as well, he also told me like, he doesn't get any money for this, but you also want me to direct people towards resources for how to spin wool. And that's one of the reasons I agree to the sponsorship, besides the fact it's going to annoy his wife. Uh, because he's like, our site, uh, it breaks even. It's just something me and my wife, we have a passion for. I just want more people to share that passion. And that to me was just so wholesome. I was like, yes, I want to work with you. I want to keep getting paid to talk about fucking wool. I remember like the first email he sent me where he talked about, like, yeah, look, we've got $500 to spend on an advertisement. We could just give that money to Facebook and like get a generic ad. And I know from experience, Facebook is terrible for that. Or... I could give it to you and just see what happens. And I told him, like, specifically in my follow-up email, look, it's an interesting idea, but I don't want to do anything that would cause marital disharmony because he told me that his wife didn't like the idea. And John clarified very quickly, oh, don't worry, the money I'll be sending you for this particular plug is my money. 
Um, so the actual business doesn't lose anything. And if the sponsorship doesn't work out, uh, my wife gets to tell me I told you so. So everybody wins. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it. Like, that is a fucking money idea. I love this. I love everything about it. And I can't believe I got dressed up so nice. I put my my cleanest, whitest, two poundish shirt on to do it. And I spilled fucking coffee all down like an absolute knob jock. Couldn't even keep John. it clean for one video, Carl. Couldn't even keep it clean for what? I'm so sorry, John. He's such a nice guy. It's just, yeah, if, uh, if it works out, if people are interested in we sell enough wool, I'd be happy to reach out and pay you the same amount again. And you can talk about whatever you want. And I want a recurring sponsorship for a guy that sells wool because that's fucking awesome. And finally, for anyone curious about where the money for this video is going, uh, part of it will be taken and added to the channel's coffers to pay for the production of the video. And the remainder of it will be split up evenly amongst the editors of the channel, Lucas, Nisha, and Brad. Um, I don't take any of the money from the sponsorship because I already draw a wage from the channel, but sponsorship do allow me to pay all the editors a bonus, you know, just for helping make the channel the success that it is. And yeah, 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 yeah. I, thanks, John, for allowing me to do that. I mean, I should be the one saying thank you. <laughs> no, it's great because everyone wins. These are great. Like, we get some funny content out of it. Like, hopefully, John will get some sales. Some people watching this might, might find themselves a new hobby and something to do. Um, you guys all get a bit of extra money and I get to say I was paid for talking about wool. 